listeners, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I'm Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How about you? Man, I'm surviving this new era we're in. We're mm-hmm. in, we're in the Biden era, man. The Biden era. We're in the middle of the Biden era. Mm-hmm. Actually, we're in the beginning of the Biden era. Uh, <laughs> how 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 is it treating you, man? Uh, um, I haven't noticed much difference so far, and I don't expect to. I don't know, man. Like, there's an energy out there. I don't know what it is. There's an energy. You're feeling you're feeling unified. <laughs> I, I, already, man. Like, yeah. are so unified. Like, yeah. well, that that's that's good because that's he is the unifying president. That's, obviously, that that is that is what he says. Mm. That's so. Well, it's. It's funny you should say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, we were going to go another way with this, but uh, Biden signed a flurry of executive orders when he entered office yesterday. Yep. And uh, and then I, I ended up just like reading through all that mess. Yeah. Well, yeah. When I came in and saw your notes, I was quite intimidated. I was like, man, he has yeah. a lot of notes there. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, I mean, it's not. It's just like so that I don't forget specific information within these things. It's oh, absolutely. Really, yeah. um, Still. Or not. to remind me of, yeah, what the specific information is so that I have something to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. But uh, I could have just written the titles probably. It would have yeah. been enough. Yeah. But uh, anyway, um, a, a couple of things before then, though. Um, about this uh, inauguration. Yes. That was an interesting. You know what? I felt like watching you know, this small group of political elites on an empty. (laughs) Surrounded by fences and military. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I thought this is probably what inaugurations look like in like North Korea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really what I thought. Dave Dave Smith made a reference to it on the last podcast of his I listened to. And it is kind of surreal that you have all of the, establishment so you got bush and and obama and clinton Mm -hmm. and hillary clinton like they're all like there of course trump went out the back door and left yeah and on top of that (laughs) which i think is funny oh i love that god i love that like that yeah we'll get we'll we'll circle back to that (laughs) but um but so they're all there surrounded by the military and fences and everything it's just it's it 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 means something. It's it, it has a feel to it, it yeah. at the least. Yeah. That, I mean, the other thing I thought of is uh, like some scene from uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall, or yeah. I don't know. It was just it was really like weird industrial, strange. Yeah. It 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 has it has there. a very very I don't I would call it creepy vibe, but yeah. I don't know if that really is fitting. But yeah. it 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 has a, a feel to it. Mm-hmm. But the fact that Trump kind of the. See, I didn't watch. I was at work all day. I just so wish I get they to... brought the lights down a little bit. It would have been the perfect. Like <laughs> well, if it had just been like really overcast. Well, he left that would there in the perfect. morning. Actually, I thought it was a pretty neat. At least the ones I saw in the news, because like I say, I worked all day, so I missed all of this live. Mm-hmm. But um, just of him kind of like leaving out the back with the sun kind of set or rising. Mm-hmm. I guess it was. Yeah. I don't know. It had it had an interesting and. You know, I hate to see him leave. Um, I don't know that it really affects me one way or the other. I mean, he wasn't definitely the best president ever, but it was entertaining. Yeah. And I, I hate to see that leave. Not that Biden will be plenty entertaining too, give mm-hmm. him time. Yeah. But, um, oh, he's always pretty entertaining, but in a very different way. In a very different way. It, yeah. But it, it's he's unintentionally entertaining. <laughs> it, precisely. <laughs> um, but but I am gonna miss miss the Trump years. Like mm-hmm. I mean, I, there was something to him just trolling the media and really stirring things up. You mm-hmm. know. Yeah. I'm gonna miss that. Yeah, except that he had so little impact. Well, really, at the end yeah. of the day, it, it in terms of like actual policy. Changes. Yeah. I mean, there was, yeah, even the people he put around him, because that's a big thing that people talk, well, you yeah. know, it's not so much Biden, but it's the people he surrounds himself. Trust me, the people that Trump surrounded himself with were no better. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. They were, a lot of them were probably well, in the end the same people. Yeah. I mean, not the like really upfront people, but the people that are in the background actually oh, yeah. doing the work. It's going to be a lot of the same it's people. It's the same people. So, I mean, not much is changing there. But but I do. Kind I mean, of, I don't think Biden's going to hire John Bolton back or or keep Mike Pompeo <laughs> on or you know maybe anything, not. But, but I mean, it wouldn't surprise me to see Bolton rear his ugly head again. Oh, like, I'm sure that he will. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, like in the administration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could I mean, be. I, like I say, I wouldn't bet against it. <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't either. So, um, yeah, it was. 
Yeah, it was interesting. I I thought that the oh the other thing. Uh, speaking of the troops, though, you know they had they brought in like twenty five thousand yeah troops. That's, that's what I heard. Um, yeah. National Guard troops. Uh, just for comparison's sake. Yeah. Um, right now the U.S. has forty five hundred troops in Afghanistan, <laughs> twenty five hundred troops in Iraq, uh, about five hundred in Syria, and about six hundred in Somalia. So those countries put together have fewer American troops in it than Washington, D.C. had yesterday. Well, I'll tell you, and the pictures were kind of crazy, like where they had just like taken over parking lots mm-hmm. and sleeping in buildings. Like you couldn't throw a stone without hitting a soldier, yeah. like from the looks of it. And, and I mean, if they had that many there, because I want to say, and I, my numbers may be wrong here, but didn't we surge Iraq to 20,000 under Bush? When we did the surge? Um, it was more than that. Was it? I think so. I mean, I don't know. I'm just thinking, but like it couldn't have been like that much more than well, that. Well, we have was it? We have uh we have twenty six thousand standing troops in South Korea. Do we right really? now? Yeah. Okay. So it was approximately equivalent to South Korea that we have guarding against <laughs> North Korea. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's it, that's an insane amount of troops. Uh, it's, it's which is a nuclear powered adversary. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's um, it's scary that they brought that many in to to. Yeah, it's weird to think that the power structure is consolidating in that way. Yeah, well, it it, it does make give you kind of the feeling that you know mm-hmm. we've had all of these troops overseas and fought all of these wars, and that now that is being pointed inward. Yeah. Towards us. And it, there's well, a, that's been the case for a long time. It has been, but like, this is like a, a escalation of that, mm-hmm. I would say. Well, I think that it's probably more obvious to more people because it's National Guard troops. Yeah. But all of that, like people coming back from the wars and joining police forces, all the equipment that they hand out to these police forces and various other law enforcement oh, agencies and so forth, this has all been the case for a long time. Yeah. This stuff's been pointed inward for a while. But... I mean, think about the difference when, in how you see police these days anyway. Oh, like, yeah. It's not. It's not like the old days of the guy just in the in the blue. Um, it's not officer friendly. Oh yeah, it's definitely not <laughs> officer friendly. But like so many police yeah. uh, uniforms look militarized now. Oh, they do. Um, you know, you got the guys walking around in body armor with the black body armor and just like uh, you know, yeah. uh, um, special ops force and yeah, <laughs> in the Middle East or something. It's. Uh, um, so we've been moving in this direction in a long time. Hopefully, hopefully it wakes some people up. Hopefully some people see those images and they're like, what is becoming of this, this country? This is not the country I want to live in. Yeah. <laughs> like, and you know, there's such a shift in how we're defining things like be really wary of them going on and on about domestic terrorism yeah. because terrorism is a word that they have used to justify all kinds. Everything. Well, of- that was, that actually circles back to kind of what my point was a minute ago is that, so there, you keep hearing this more and more in the mainstream media about like talking about January 6th as like the new 9-11 and, and ha- wanting to have like a commission on it. But it's it's scary to think because like 9-11 brought about the surveillance state um, and that their Patriot Act and Patriot all Act, all of that stuff. And like what are what's going to come about in the next few years from from what's happened now? Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's just scary. That that's definitely something to be watchful for. Well, I mean, it seems to me that they're in a lot of ways they're redefining things. They're like more broadly defining these terms so that they can fit more people under the umbrella of something that they can ignore your rights. Yeah. Um. Well, and, and with domestic terrorism, that's a that's a huge part of it. And this whole incitement thing. Well, that's right? exactly what I was fixing to say. The deal with the incitement is with going to impeach Trump and try to prosecute him or wh- however they're going to go, at least imp- try to impeach him with this incitement call. Like if they're actually able to impeach him over that, what is that going to mean for our rights going forward? Well, I mean, they're going to have to fight about it because um, there's a Supreme Court case a while back, Brandenburg versus Ohio. And essentially the story is there's this KKK guy organized a rally and and, and invited and this is how how we used to deal with KKK rallies in the past is that like a few people would show up and then everybody else would laugh at them and that was kind of the end. Yeah. Um, but he, uh, this guy whose name, well, Brandenburg, I suppose. Yeah. Is that right? Anyway. Um, His name's in the case. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm thinking, wait, was it, was Brandenburg the guy or was Brandenburg the city? Oh, 
Uh, yeah. Man. Anyway, um, point is uh, that he, you know, brought in people to get, you know, to give speeches to get their people riled up about, you know, promoting violence against minorities and so forth. And he did the same, and um, and yeah. so he was prosecuted under uh, under the law at the time. Um, which was this like very broadly defined incitement thing. And you only had to be connected to the group that was involved and, you know, same kind of thing that they're starting to do right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, that you were connected with the group that was involved in this thing on January 6th. And so therefore you were also uh, responsible and liable for it. And, uh, Anyway, um, it ended up being appealed up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court um, ended up ruling that uh, speech advocating, like, or how should I say this, even speech that was advocating, like directly advocating violence or uh, a crime, um, or a position that would require violence or a crime, is protected under the First Amendment, unless, quote, it's directed to inciting or producing imminent lawless action and is likely to incite or produce such action. Like both of those yeah. things have to be true. Yeah. So um, probably a good example is uh, when they were having the Black Lives Matter um, riots and they, those people and wherever they were, that couple that was standing out back oh. trying to defend their property. Yeah. You probably remember this more with more detail than I do. But yeah. um, anyway when there were people in their backyard that had already broken into their property yeah. and there's a guy saying, let's kill him and burn him down, burn this place down or whatever it was. I can't remember exactly. That but you hear be, a guy, yeah. um, that's that they've, they have a mob assembled already on these people's property with them standing <laughs> out there. Yeah. And there's a guy saying, we just kill him And you know what, that would qualify as, inciting uh, riot and yeah, violence, uh, yeah, inciting, um, imminent lawless action. Yeah. Uh, and is likely to produce such an action because you already have a riled up yeah. crowd. They're already there. They're at the place. Yeah, you're, and you're yeah. saying this right now. <laughs> this is this is the place. Let's do it. Yeah. So Trump's thing about, you know, march down to the Capitol and you tell them whatever, like that, yeah. not even close. Not well, even close. Here's the other thing that at least scares me. So Mitch McConnell got yeah. out the other day. It may have been a few days ago now, and was basically saying like condemning Trump for what he did and inside. But the thing, well, that, I mean, that I'm thing, not saying that he doesn't deserve some condemnation. Well, because no, no, that no, was stupid. I'm not. Well, I don't. Just, what my, where my problem is at though is his focus was on the election stuff. That mm. peddling misinformation was where he was focusing his criticism, yeah. um, and. I have a problem with that because there's no, there's no. While I ha I haven't seen evidence one way or the other, but he he believes that, and that is his opinion that this mm -hmm. election was stolen from him. Yeah, and I just have a problem with them focusing on well, the he's he's putting out misinformation, and we can't have that. Yeah, like that's dangerous. Well, I mean they they've got people in the house that are trying to put out like uh, something like a hundred Republicans in the house uh, for. Um, you know, insurrection or sedition or whatever they're trying to call it yeah. for questioning the election, yeah. um, for having the intent to, to vote against certifying the election. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's part of a, that's part of a legal process in the house. Like there's, yeah. I mean, it shouldn't be a question really. Um, it's generally not, yeah. but this isn't the first time. It's, and it's amazing to me that, it, that they would call it sedition to question the results of election after spending four years talking about how Russia stole the last one. Well, that's, And don't forget about Bush both times, George yeah. W both times, 2000 and 2004, they claimed yeah. fraud and that it was a stolen election and yeah. they may not be wrong, yeah. but the the point is that this is not new and it's generally been called for by the other side and yeah. the republicans never said it was sedition when they did well exactly yeah and well they've never had anybody dig in i think as hard as what trump has dug that's in, though. probably I mean, also true. <laughs> like he's he's like but he unwavering. left he did leave yeah yeah out the back door <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which i still love <laughs> so. um well let's move on to these executive orders yeah because this is like first thing that that Biden did. Obviously, they had all these things written up beforehand, up, yeah. you know. But um, so the first thing he did was he uh, issued an executive order um, calling for unity and um, making the inauguration day a national day of unity, because you know he's the unity president. <laughs> he's going to bring us all together. 
A lot of the use of the U word there. Yeah. Well, it, it was in there a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, he proceeded to just undo every single thing that Trump had done. Yeah. Um, that presumably something like 70 million people approved of. Yeah. At least portions of these things. Yeah. Um, and so he's he's calling for unity, but then he turns around and he undoes everything that the previous administration did. Now, Trump did more or less the same thing when he during yeah. his term, but which is the problem. Like the problem isn't the problem is that these these people have too much power. Mm-hmm. Like that's the reason politics are so divisive the way they are, because if your candidate loses, everything's gonna change. Yeah. And and it's that's that's really where the focus needs to be, especially mm-hmm. us as libertarians, is tell is is educating people that look. It's not it's not what they're doing. It's that they can do anything. Yeah. You know? Well, and the and the first thing like after the National Day of Unity, whatever, <laughs> um, the the very next order issued was to f- freeze um, action in all executive departments, uh, like any changes. Um, pending that were issued by the previous administration, pending review by the new administration's people. Oh yeah. Yeah. So he's like everything that Trump told you to do in all these executive departments that he was in control of until earlier today. Yeah. If you haven't already implemented it, stop now and don't do anything further with anything that he asked you to do until my people look at it and approve it or not. Hmm. That's that sounds, and, and you know they gave Trump such a hard time about mucking up the gears, but that mm-hmm. sounds like that mucks up the gears pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there were some, um, some things like unless it uh, would result in immediate blah. Well, know, yeah. That, I, I mean, mean obviously, like things, yeah, but, stuff like that. But even yeah. still, like talk about. I mean, but Trump went in to muck up the gears, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <you know? laughs> so. He didn't do a good enough job. Then no, clearly. Um, then uh, the the next one was about. Um, and I'm going to quote from it here, right. affirmatively advancing equity, civil rights, racial justice, and equal opportunity is the responsibility of the whole of our government. What? All right. I'll read it again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, like I kind of got it. Affirmatively like... advancing equity, civil rights, racial justice, and equal opportunity is the responsibility of the whole of our government. So what does that look like in action? It means that they're actively trying to make things equal across the board. Wow. Well. It means uh, discrimination in order to fight discrimination. Yeah. That's what it, exactly. that's what it means. It's forced dis- d- discrimination. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's and just that statement I would disagree with. It's not the government's job to do that. No. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, he is talking about across government, though, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, is Specifically, he? Specifically, yes. I mean, yeah. the, the order itself says that all these departments need to look at their own um, processes to make sure that they're not doing anything that's systemically keeping some group down or yeah. whatever. But um, but that statement stands on its own. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's scary stuff, man. Yeah. Um, and then after that, he revoked the travel bans. Um <laughs> I thought that this was kind of funny. So it's, quote, our national security will be enhanced by revoking um, orders protecting, vetting, the uh, protecting the nation, vetting entrance to the nation uh, for foreign terrorists and other public safety threats. Yeah. Our national security will be enhanced yeah. by, by undoing the borders. <laughs> yeah. Right. Undoing protecting the nation from foreign terrors. I mean, I'm just looking at the, the yeah. this is just the titles it's of just the various orders. Moron, right? yeah, yeah. It just doesn't make sense. So, um, he's taking a bunch of executive orders by Trump that are titled something like yeah. protecting the nation from foreign terrorists and other public safety threats or vetting entrance to the country to protect from terrorists and for other, you know, public safety threats. And he's saying that we're going to undo all of these actions so that we can make our nation safer. <laughs> it feels kind of backwards. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm not opposed to doing this, actually. I mean, I yeah. think, I, I know that you're more of a control the border, borders I tighter am. than I am, but, yeah. um, you know, the, the like blanket travel bans and, and the, uh, actually, there's another one later on about the visas, issued visas and things like that. But, yeah. um, I, like, I'm not opposed to letting more people into this country. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. It just seems, 
It just seems backwards to say His that you're improving seems... national security by revoking a bunch of orders that were that are actually titled around national security. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Um, then uh, the next thing was the mask mandate for federal employees and contractors um, and encouraging masking across the U.S. And he uh, they establish a new COVID response team. So more bureaucracy, more et cetera. And of course, the whole thing was, um, it was about, you know, uh, encouraging science while he's going on about um, lockdowns and wearing masks. And, you know, like I said the other night, or last night, I guess it was, when we were having our our, um, meeting. our yeah, meeting. county meeting, um, th- they started this thing off saying that we need to follow the science before there was any science. Mm-hmm. And they were telling us we needed to lock down, stay apart, wear masks. And now we have science that directly contradicts those things as being effective. Yeah. And they're still telling us that we need to follow the science and do those things. <laughs> they're still telling us to follow the science, but not that science. Yeah, not the <laughs> not, actual not science. Not the actual science. The made-up the... science from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the stuff that gives us more control over your life. <laughs> right. Yeah, and that that might as well be what it says, right? Like, no, just do what we say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the uh, And, of course, the, the actual mandate only applies to federal employees and contractors, but there's this, you know strongly encourage other thing who knows how they they can put pressure in various ways to make private businesses follow these rules too oh absolutely um, so you know look out for that and know that wearing that mask makes no difference in infection rates no yeah no difference no. wear a mask <laughs> don't wear a mask no difference in infection rates the science bears that out <laughs> yes there have there's been multiple studies now that have shown that Wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, the infection rates are roughly the same. Now yeah. there could be other reasons for it. People adjust their behavior based on risk level that they're willing that they're comfortable with. So it could be that um, more people that are wearing masks in these, you know, in the mask wearing group in these studies are going out more and interacting with more people. Where the people that aren't wearing masks are are isolating themselves more because they don't want to take the risk. I mean, there's other right. things that can feed into this, but. The point is, I mean, like you can't you can't neutralize all the variables. I guess is what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, you can never do that. But yeah. the point is that the studies show that in the mask group and the unmasked group, the infection rates are the same. Yeah. Definitely not proof that masks <laughs> help. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, then uh, he revoked the withdrawal of federal grants to sanctuary cities. Remember, Trump said that if you're a sanctuary city, you don't get federal grants oh, anymore. Yeah. Well, so he revoked that. Like, sanctuary cities can have all of our money again. Yeah. Um, not all of our money, but you know what I mean. They get their fair share. Being of- hyperbolic a little <laughs> yeah. bit there, but they get their fair share of our yeah, money. Yeah. Well, fair share, you know. <laughs> um, then this one I actually think is really terrible. Uh, he revoked all the regulatory reform. Oh, yeah? Um, so all the orders uh, that Trump signed that were like, um, if you're going to add a new uh, regulation, you need to cut two regulations before you do oh, it. Yeah, um, make yeah. sure that the costs are less, like reducing the costs all the time. Um, uh, let's see. Um, rec- uh, regulations or... Um, I guess executive orders that required that federal uh, regulatory agencies act in an open and consistent way with public knowledge and input. Like he revoked all this. Oh wow, well that stinks. Yeah. Well, not, so that was probably one of the better things sh- that Trump did. Shouldn't be surprised by that, but at the same time, that's mm-hmm. kind of terrible. Yeah. Um, then there's a. It's kind of procedural. Uh, the census um, representative reapportionment was the next thing. Um, but he did explicitly state that it would include, uh, illegal alien residents, um, in Mm. determining how many representatives the various areas would get. Yeah. Yeah. Um, saying that we've never done that in the past. I, I am not sure that that's true. I didn't have time to research it, but I can't imagine that we, uh, have historically counted people that we knew were living somewhere illegally as part of the legal. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wouldn't make sense. Reapportionment to, of representatives. Yeah. It w- it wouldn't make sense to just on the basis that these people can't vote. 
So why would they why would they be considered in the amount of representation they have? Can't vote. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Talking about like illegals and stuff? Yeah. Well, I mean they're not supposed Times to. Times have changed. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but still though. Yeah. Doesn't seem like it makes sense to me, but yeah. I mean this one's not terrible because I, I I can't imagine that there's such concentrated levels of um of illegal residents in places that would in states because this is done by state right yeah, yeah um that it would really greatly influence the number of representatives especially at this point was, because one representative represents a tremendous number of people, of people now. now yeah so anyway um and then the he revoked the weakening of environmental protect uh, protections um specifically during the trump administration yeah. now I just want to point out that it that within the executive order it said um, that they he wanted to revoke executive orders related to um, changing regulations on environmental protections uh, that were enacted between January twentieth, twenty seventeen, and January nineteenth, twenty twenty one. Oh wow! Like he literally yeah, like called out car- carved out the section of time the Trump administration and yeah. said everything that he did. Yeah. That was done during this particular administration. We're revoking. Yeah. Well, he liked everything before because he I was part so. of that administration. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then there was a thing about combating discrimination based on gender identity or sexual orientation. Yeah. All these things are already part of the law, so I'm not sure. I mean, this was just kind of a just, virtue signal yeah, thing. Just kind of giving that signal out there. Hey, yeah. look at me. Um, then he added something that I'm not entirely opposed to. Uh, exactly, which is that um, all executive appointees will now sign a pledge that's supposed to be enforceable by law um, that's related to trying to, it's like an ethics pledge um, that's related to trying to deal with the revolving door issues of people coming from lobbying organizations, moving into the government, using their position in government to continue their lobbying, Uh. then, and and or um, using their time in government to move to lobbying organization and use their contacts yeah. to do. I mean, they uh, should have their kids do that. <clears throat> like, that's not for them to do. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. There was one that specifically said um, that you can't, uh, that for those restricted communications um, for two years and you can't uh, facilitate communications between other people for a year. So no. you're like, you're two years that you can't talk to the people that you used to work with if you fall under this particular uh, umbrella. Yeah. Um, but after a year, you can facilitate conversations between other people <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and the people that <laughs> and you're not people... supposed to be in contact with anymore. Yeah. Anyway, that was, I thought that was kind of funny. The whole thing can be waived, though, on oh, an yeah. individual basis. They can waive the entire thing for anybody um, I mean, there's like a, to, yeah. there's a number of reasons, but they were so broad that it seems yeah. like they, they could, could just like applied, do it to anybody. Yeah. yeah. Just got to get in the, <clears throat> the right people in touch. Yeah, exactly. Um, it terminated the Southern border emergency proclamation, um, and halted the wall construction oh. and, uh, looked to repurpose the materials and contracts. Um, now I just, this is not a surprise. I don't think that the Southern border is an emergency situation. <laughs> I'm not opposed to them, you know, terminating the emergency proclamation. Of course, right. they only did that so that they could move funding. Yeah. Um, that was the whole reason they did it was so we could. Yeah. Now this does create a real fuster cluck. Um, yeah. as you've already started, like you've issued contracts, you've got people already doing work. Yeah. Um, so, and they're saying, all right, stop. Uh, what do we do with the money and the people? Well, let's try and find something else to do with them and we'll just shift them to other projects or something. Yeah. Um, I, so, I would also so we're going to have some half built wall out there. Is yeah. that what you're telling me? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, I would also point out though, that this is happening when there's something, there's a caravan of something like 8,000 Hondurans, uh, moving through the Mexican border and on their way to the U S border. Yeah. Yeah, keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that that's really being covered, but that it's oh, happening. It's, it's happening. Yeah, yeah. no, there, and there has been a little bit of coverage, not okay. a lot, but I've seen a little <clears throat> bit on the on the regular news about it. So okay, here, here they come. Um, there was an executive order about extending um, stays for Liberian nationals that had fled 
uh, the problems in Liberia in the early 2000s. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I would just recommend that you go read that because it's so funny, like the timing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, because the, the thing was set up in like 2003 um, to protect people that were fleeing Liberia um, until like 2007. But then in the 2020 uh, National Defense Authorization Act, they extended it by saying that the Liberian nationals who had been here consistently since 2014, seven years after their stay was supposed to have ended, yeah. um, that they could continue to stay and apply for uh, permanent resident status and so forth. I don't know. It's just it's just <laughs> weird to look at this timing. Like, okay, we, we said that they could come here in 2003 when bad things were happening, and then we said that the bad things weren't happening anymore in 2007. But we didn't actually make them leave then. And then we decided in 2020 that any of them who had still been here since 2014, yeah. that they you would be start. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. And, <laughs> and this has been continued over and over again, yeah. including by Trump, by the way. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah we're, you know, we're not taking in... Um, refugees uh but i'm not kicking out the refugees who have long stayed past their <laughs> state yeah. anyway so just just be aware you big trump fans yeah. that he allowed this to continue too yeah and this so, was his so big no, no, talking point yeah, so yeah. um uh, and the last one um was to preserve and fortify daca the deferred um whatever for children yeah it's i forget what it stands forget, for yeah. um but uh Anyway, allowing these kids that were that were born in the U.S. to illegal immigrants to stay, or that came over when they were too young to know any better to stay. Yeah. Um, actually, I guess that's what it is because if you're born here, you're, you're you're already a citizen. Yeah, you're already a citizen. So it's just the people that came over with their parents illegally when they were too young to be in have any idea have, what was going yeah. on um, that they can stay. And I'm not actually really opposed to that either, but I just want to point yeah. out again here. Um, that it was to preserve and fortify DACA yeah. because Trump never ended it. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I'm pretty sure I remember him specifically not ending it, but I could be wrong. No, nope, you're right. He didn't yeah. end it. And so Biden, again, is just making a show of something that he doesn't have to do anything about. <laughs> yeah. Just so you know, I'm okay with this too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it's probably just to draw a line between him and Trump, even though Trump didn't end it either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was disappointed watching the news coverage of it um, because Biden didn't hold up each of the the ones and like like Trump always did like a presentation when oh, he yeah. did when he did the the um, executive orders. It was all like he'd hold it up, he'd sign it, and then he'd mm -hmm. hold it up and show it to everybody. You yeah, know, Biden didn't do all that. He just signed it. He's not quite the showman. He's not Trump, the showman, man. Uh, Trump, yeah, just, Trump is yeah. was has been. Made me question whether he even knew what he was signing. That is a question worth asking, probably. <laughs> I think it that is. Is a question worth asking. I don't know. The, this whole thing has been so weird. And I was talking to somebody at my office, and they were really excited that um, the end of Trump and the beginning of Biden, like this, what the world is a better place as of <laughs> eleven Central Time yesterday. Uh, the world is much better place. No, it's not. Nothing's uh, changed. Nothing's, nothing's changed. changed at all. Um, nothing like, of importance has changed. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to miss, like I said, I'm going to miss the entertainment aspect, but nothing in my life has changed. Yeah. Like, the only thing, the only thing may be positive from my perspective that may come out of this is to, um, restore relations with Iran and not be, not yeah. do the sprinksmanship thing with Iran. Yeah. But I think I, at the same time though, I think we're going to reignite things with North Korea. Yeah, probably. So, I mean, um, you're going and, from one hotbed to another. You know, you'd think with all the Chinese connections that that Biden had, that <laughs> things might be nicer with China. But he, he it doesn't look that way. No, I mean, not from um, the people that he's put in these positions. Well, no. And of course, they're they're going to heat things up with Russia too. Oh yeah. So we're all we're doing with Iran really is skipping the middleman. Yeah. Like the Iran thing was like, okay, well, we can kind of we cannot kind of take off Russia by you know dealing with Iran. Well, that, forget Iran. We'll just, we'll just focus on Russia directly. Great. Great <laughs> yeah, plan. That's, that's a good idea. Yeah. And China too. Again, these yeah. are, these are countries with thermonuclear weapons. Like yeah. why? We, let's not play these games. Um, yeah. And if you think that things are, 
uh, are going to get better for the Palestinians with a Democrat in charge. Nope, afraid not. I mean, they've already said they're not moving the capital back to, or the embassy back to Tel Aviv, that it's going to stay in Jerusalem. I've heard nothing from the Biden administration about opposing the settlements and the annexations. Yeah. None of that's changing. Where I mean, Biden is probably just as much of a Zionist president as Trump. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think pretty well at this point, both parties are in the same camp as far as that's concerned. There's a little bit more of a divide uh, in the Democrat okay. Party about is this. There? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't aware. I hadn't really kept up one way or the other. But I've always kind of felt like they were at least somewhat in the same camp in that respect. Well, there's there's grassroots Democrats that are opposed to the the um, the Palestinian situation. Yeah. Um, the the way that Israel is dealing with the Palestinians. So because there's a grassroots uh, movement about the Palestinian oppression. There are Democrats that will speak out against what's going on, gotcha. and of course, and then you, you got like the Ilhan Omars. Oh well, yeah, and, yeah, you know, people like that yeah. um, as well. So there is there is a little bit more of a divide about that on the left, but not from Biden. Yeah, right. he's not part of that. Yeah. No, no, not at all. So. Um, and uh, I mean, I just, I you know, I've said before, I have hope that he may have learned something somewhere along the way. I mean, the stories from inside the, the Obama administration are that he is one of, he was one of the least hawkish people, that he was opposed yeah. to intervention in Libya, that he was opposed to the Yemen stuff. He, yeah. um, well, we don't know that that's true, and we'll just have to see if he actually does something about it. Maybe, I mean, maybe that will be kind of a, a glimmer of hope with him, that maybe mm. that is somewhat the case. I mean, I hope so. I would yeah. love to see more peace and less war. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I can't imagine that a, that a president who hasn't been openly opposed to all the stuff that's going on is going to do a better job of shutting things down than the the president before him that was openly that was opposed. A, to no, and stuff. I would agree. I mean, because I, I think if, if when reality sets in, it's going to, if, if Trump wasn't able to dismantle mm -hmm. all of this, and I don't know how much he wanted to in some areas, mm -hmm. but, and we know still, the Biden's hawkish on Syria too. So oh, the chances yeah. of us escalating in Syria again are pretty high. It'll be interesting to see if we end up in a new war under this administration. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would bet on it. I would too. <laughs> Uh, like start counting. We should do an over yeah. the under like yeah. bet. <laughs> right. um, how many days before uh, yeah. we enter a new war? Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting to see. Yeah. I don't know. That's all I really wanted to cover. Um, is there, is there something else that you wanted yeah, to talk about? I didn't really have much else. Um, I did want to just kind of mention, cause I knew this might ruffle your feathers a little bit. Okay. <laughs> the, I was watching the news last night with the coverage and everything and the, the good people on both sides comment came up mm -hmm. again. And I was I like yelling at the TV and like, yeah. how many times does this have to be debunked? Like, yeah. I mean, this is, oh, yeah, yeah. It, that, that was another thing that came up when I was talking, um, with the person at work is, uh, saying that, well, we've heard all these terrible things from Trump's mouth. I said, yeah. well, yeah, but a lot of stuff was taken out of context. Well, how can you take that out of context? Because if you only cut a little bit, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> then, exactly. Yeah, and, and I said, I actually drew it as, like with Ron Paul. Yeah. You can do this with Ron Paul, too. Oh, absolutely. Because Ron Paul speaks in little fragments and doesn't finish the sentences and moves on to a new thought before he's done. Like It's hard to listen to Ron Paul, I think. Yeah. Um, because he just keeps... Dave Smith actually is another one yeah. um, who doesn't finish sentences. I, I find myself listening to that podcast sometimes going, just like finish the damn sentence. <laughs> finish the thought. <laughs> um, but people that talk in that way where they don't, they don't close things out and they, yeah. they have these little phrases that you can pull out and you can pull out these little phrases and make it sound like they've said all kinds of terrible things. Yeah. And Ron Paul is just like, you know, <laughs> the, one of the most decent people on the planet, probably. Oh, absolutely. Um, but you could, you could take what he's saying and cut it up in a way. And it sounds like that's all he said because of the way he speaks. Yeah. Um, and Trump's the same way. Like he mm -hmm. has that way of speaking that, that odd way of speaking that just, yeah, it's easy to do that. And of course yeah. the mainstream media is more than happy to, to dive into that. Yeah. But it just, it amazed me that, that all of this time that that's still, that, that one in particular, like yeah. is still thrown out there so regularly. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of impressive. And, um, I, I guess before we close out in, 
in news of the absurd. Yeah. Uh, I saw this um, article about a manatee that had somebody had scratched oh. the the word Trump into the um, algae that was growing on the back of a manatee. Yeah, so you you found this story too. I heard it. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought this was hysterical. Um, now, <laughs> the the odd thing is that the manatee is protected in all kinds of ways. Oh yeah, you can't mess um, with manatees. There's like yeah. two federal uh, um, statutes that protect manatee. The um, uh, marine mammals and endangered species. And of course there's a bunch of local statutes also that protect manatees. Oh, um, yeah. have you ever seen one in the wild? I haven't. I've seen okay. them in like in, in environments or whatever, but mm. not in the wild. Yeah, yeah. I've seen them in the wild. They're like the most boring things ever. I don't know. I mean, I, I would imagine they people. look pretty boring in the zoo. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, and they are in fact, yeah. <laughs> boring. And they, the reason that they have so much trouble is because they can't even get out of the way of boats. Yeah, um, yeah that's true. But, uh, Anyway, um, it turns out that if they if they figure out who did this, yeah. um, the it's punishable like manatee harassment. <laughs> this is actually a thing. Yeah. Manatee harassment is punishable by a fifty thousand dollar fine and Ooh. up to a year in prison. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and well. I thought, if they find this person, do you think that he will also he or she? Yeah. Uh, more gotta, likely gotta a be guy. Equal, yeah. It's, yeah, it's more likely a guy that would do this, yeah. though. I'm pretty sure. Um, My guess would be a drunk guy. <laughs> probably. A drunk <laughs> snorkeling guy. Yeah, exactly. You know. um, anyway, uh, if they find the person yes. uh, who did this, do you think that, that that person would also be charged with a hate crime? <laughs> <laughs> You can, uh, I mean, we've talked about stacking charges before. Yeah. Like, I mean, I feel like th th this would be an excellent opportunity for them to also charge him with a hate crime yeah. against manatees and against everybody else because it said Trump. Because it's Trump. Yeah. 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 I had said years ago that, that the red hat was going to be the new symbol of hate after Trump left office. And yeah. I was, it actually started before he left office. So yeah. Was, it started was, as soon as he took office. Yeah, it really did. But yeah. like, I mean like extreme, like, mm -hmm. like the rebel flag, like absolutely yeah. can't, not, not allowed to be anywhere in public. Yeah. Um, because there was a story just today. I read something about here locally in Baldwin County. There was a big kerfuffle because a kid was allowed to attend school all day with a rebel flag mask. Um, yeah. And I mean, like we're talking like they, it was a big kerfuffle over it like yeah. in the news. I believe it. So I wanted a mask with a gold star. Oh yeah. Yeah. I wanted a, I wanted a mask with a gold star, David. If I was going to wear a mask everywhere, I wanted yeah. a gold star, David on there. Yeah. Cause I'm just trying to make a statement. <laughs> well, so was the guy with the rebel flag. Yeah, but, I suppose so. But yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't taken very well, apparently. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I can't breathe. I, that's the one I wanted. Yeah. I, I wanted the, the, I can't breathe. And that one's okay. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I am a white guy. <laughs> uh, you did hear, um, that there was the, uh, um, black lives matter activist that was arrested in, in connection with the, um, Capitol Hill no, riots. I did oh, not. this is actually kind of interesting. Um, there's a guy who is a Black Lives Matter activist that um, there's that is being charged with incitement, and there's a bunch of video, mostly that he took, where he's following people around and trying to get them to break things and destroy things oh, and so, so forth was in, in the Capitol. Like actual um, incitement then. And yeah, and the interesting thing about it is that, uh, and this could be selectively pulled, but um, yeah. a lot of the uh, the audio that I heard from it, yeah. there's other there's other people there saying, no, no, we don't want to break anything. No, no, we don't want to. <laughs> no, you need, don't do that. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. When he's urging people to break to stuff and yeah. tear stuff down and what have you. Wow. It's kind of interesting. That. Yeah. Um, so, there are obviously plenty of MAGA people that were also inciting oh, cool. and, and so forth. But the idea that there was no uh, yeah. provocateurs out there doing stuff yeah. is definitely not the case. Yeah. Oh. And I never, I mean, I always kind of thought it was probably a mixed bag anyway. I yeah. Mean, they, these people were clearly coming from a Trump rally, but you got to believe there was at least some people in that audience out there mm -hmm. that was like, all right, you know, yeah. I'm going. let's, let's yeah. get this let's, thing so that we can, let's these people up yeah. and, and, and send them that direction. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. So. Um, all right. Well, uh, I guess, uh, that's a, that's a fine place to close. Um, that should get us taken off of something, right? <laughs> and uh, it will in this day. And, and someday, someday, yeah. 
We're going to make that SPLC list <laughs> of anti-government extremists. Man, I'm looking forward to that day. If yeah. I get a letter or something, I'm definitely framing it. You're framing that bad boy. Absolutely. <laughs> Putting that up in Absolutely. the office. <laughs> so um, we plan to be back in a week. Yeah. Yeah. I see no uh, reason why not. So uh, follow us on um, Facebook. Uh, subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. I keep forgetting about YouTube. We are yeah. there on YouTube. There's yeah. no real video. It's just our logo in the background, but you get all the audio. And listen. some people, yeah, some people like that for some reason. Don't understand why. Yeah. Um, I think we have a new moderator there that should put up a little bit of extra information, although we haven't quite made that work out, I don't think, yet. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, contact me about that. I, I want to make sure that <laughs> we... You know, when when you listen to this, yeah, <laughs> please contact me so that we can get this this figured out um, and start providing people with a little bit more information on YouTube. Uh, essentially, all I've asked is that he um, that he provide a timeline uh, yeah. in a sticky or added to the description that yeah. just says you know says it gives timestamps and topics. Yeah, um, to make it easier for people in our you know, 45 minutes to an hour to find at least the parts that they, they really want to listen to if they yeah, don't want to listen to. If there's something specific they're yeah. looking to find out about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and hopefully they like it and they go back and listen to the whole thing. Yep. Because this is all one big thing here. It is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, as long as like, share, have subscribe. Um, do all those other things and uh, we'll be back in a week roughly when we finally get this right and in the meantime try to stay free life's short live free ciao later mm-hmm.